Coming up in this video, I'm gonna show you how I paint a Genie Afriti from the Deep Cuts Pathfinder line from WizKids. Welcome back to Mini Junk, everyone. My name is Jarrett. So I haven't painted a Nolzers slash Pathfinder Deep Cuts miniature for quite a while now, and I, I still really enjoy the line. And recently, one of the figures definitely caught my eye. It was the Genie of Freedy, and I'll put up the artwork for it as well. And what's cool about the line is, as far as I can tell, they, they pretty much duplicate the artwork that you might find in the Monster Manual, for example. I think that's what they do when it comes to the sculpts. I'm painting him mostly with contrast paints, but I do mix in a few regular paints where contrast isn't going to get it done. So I'm going for a nice tabletop look. I'm not going for something crazy looking. I think the Nolzer's Pathfinder miniatures are really, really good for contrast paints because they come pre-primed. They have a lot of detail on them, at least the, you know, the character size ones, and that works well with contrast paints. The only caveat being they are somewhat i mentioned this later but they're kind of plagued with seam lines that can be hard to clean and the seam lines will pick up contrast paints or washes and create lines on your figure so that's the one downside i wish i don't think they'll ever get rid of them it's probably something to do with how they manufacture them if you're new to the channel i cover everything related to the hobby of painting miniatures for war games and board games so consider subscribing and keep up to date with the videos i'm putting out all right let's get right to painting the genie ifridi from WizKids. So the first thing I had to do is clean off the mold lines. I would say the mold lines are probably the Achilles heel of the Nolzers and Deep Cuts miniatures. They are often in hard to clean places and a little hard to get off, so I use a, a sharp knife for that. And you want to make sure it's quite clean because we're going to be using some contrast paints and inks and things that we, they can pull up against seam lines and show. Uh, so here I'm pointing out some of the spots I removed and I wanted to use um, an airbrush white primer to cover those back up so that's why I masked off the transparent sword. This is the primer I use, this is the primer I almost always use. We're going to start out with some basilicanum gray and real basic we're just going to paint over the rocks. There's two rocks I added and then he's standing on like a platform of rocks uh, so I just went over that all with um, basilicanum gray without any thinner. This next step is a bit of an experiment I'm using and yellow contrast paint and I'm really just using it as a glaze and trying not to do what contrast paint likes to do which is to pool up and create darker shades which is the point of it but I'm, I'm just spreading it around as thin as I can to because it really does make a nice glaze it's better I think than like a Lamenter's yellow glaze for example and I wanted it very very thin as an undercoat to the main color which is going to be red I thought it would add some richness as it came through the red contrast paint we're going to use later. So I just went through with my brush and just covered up any areas of flesh. The base is covered in Vallejo dark texture paste, which I had allowed the white primer to prime. So I go over all of those areas with Agaros Dunes contrast paint, which is something I've done in my recent contrast paint basing tutorial. For the dark red armor, I knew that the contrast paint was going to dull it down quite a lot, and so I needed the brightest silver I could use as the undercoat for that, so that that metallic sheen would still come through um, what's ultimately going to be that flesh terrors color that's it's really quite opaque and, and dark and really quite an awesome color actually uh, so I just used Vallejo Meta metal paints um, silver which is a very bright silver that flows and covers wonderfully highly recommended and I just go through and paint all of the you know I avoid the shield but I painted all the armor plates and shoulder shoulder pauldrons and things like that with the silver Next step is pretty simple. I use Sigor Brown right out of the bottle to do all of the straps that are holding on the armor plates and sort of like the belt and also the um, strap that holds on the shield. For the wooden part on either side of the shield, I use contrast paint Wildwood.
as I mentioned earlier, I think Flesh Terrors is a really great red. And I'm going to come in and just cover up all of the silver that we did earlier now that it's dry. I'm not trying to put on a really thick coat per se. Uh, I'm not doing the one thick coat, but I am going thicker than we did the yellow because I am allowing it to create some of those pooling shadows that pulls out some of the texture on the armor and pulls out some of the segments between the plates of armor. This is a new acquisition for me. This is Blood Angels Red. Uh, and I just, you notice I'm just putting it on the back of his elbow here. Just I wanted to make sure that it's going to be the right tone before I start slathering it all over his chest. And you know what? It, it was. So I end up putting this all over anywhere that we've done that yellow flesh. I think the yellow is giving it a, a nice sort of fiery tone as it shines through the very thin coat of red that we're doing. Um, I am applying it out of the bottle and I am allowing it to pool uh, to create shades where appropriate shadows where appropriate uh, but not too heavily obviously just waking up any any overly deep pools to to avoid it looking too blotchy For that dark blue-gray colored, um, what is this, a cloak? It's kind of a skirt. I decided to use Leviathan blue, which is quite a dark blue. Now with a large area like this, even though it has folds, it is going to be prone to streaking with contrast paints. There's a lot of like long flat surfaces. And so I was going fairly heavily and fairly quickly. And then going back, you know, grab some more and go over the area you were just doing if it starts to look blotchy um, it's kind of hard to describe but you're trying to keep it working and keep pulling along the surface um, you'll notice I'm dragging down because I'm trying to pull any of the pooling or blotchiness down along the smooth surface to the bottom uh, as opposed to sort of going across it which would create a lot of like uh, horizontal lines across the surface so it, it's a little tricky to work with a large flat flat ish surface like this but I also knew that I was going to come back and use black over top of it because I wasn't going for blue. I'm actually going for quite a dark color as the end result. And I felt that that black was probably going to help smooth things out and, and eliminate some of that blotchiness. Or at least that's what I was hoping. Skeleton Horde has been my go-to for horns and bone. And so I sort of automatically did it on the horns of this guy before I realized that a the official sort of well not official the artwork showed it as dark and or black and i think that looks cooler against this red so i would skip this step if i were you because ultimately i'm going to go for black speaking of which here's black templar contrast paint this is as i said what i'm going to go over that original leviathan blue with and i'm doing this again without thinning it and i'm just going over all the surface of the skirting to really darken down that blue. What's cool is what it ends up looking like is more like a black or dark gray with blue tones to it. Uh, so it, it did work out essentially how I wanted it to. It's probably a little blotchy because it's contrast paint and these are big surfaces, but ultimately I'm actually quite happy with how it looks once it dried. For the ribbon hanging off the hilt of his sword and the little wrap he has around his uh, wrist, I'm going to go for this similar similar to what I did with the Leviathan. I'm going to use Flesh Terror's red and then turn it into quite a dark, dark red by putting black over it later. For the gold, I like the yellowy gold that Retributor Armor gives. So, I mean, with con you can't really do metallics with contrast paint, or you could, but it, I don't know if it's... It would be a lot more work than we're trying to put in here. This is more of a speed paint. Uh, so you're going to need some metallic paints, and so 
similar to what we do with the silver, I suppose. And so I'm using that just on his gold necklace and his earrings. Uh, there's not, and I think also the hilt of the sword, but there's not too many gold areas on this guy. It really does look nice against that red though. Now I'm using the original bolt gun metal, the greatest metal of all time. Uh, I'm just gonna put that over parts of the shield, so around that edging of the shield, and eventually we'll come back and we'll highlight that up with a brighter, a brighter silvery color. Um, very, you know, the the I would say the detail here is a little soft and hard to see where the wood ends and the metal begins. So just take your time and, and be neat and just try to create fairly straight lines because this is metal trim and it wouldn't be sort of ragged. Of course, if you don't have bolt gun metal, and many people won't, you can you can use lead belcher or that new Iron Warriors color I think they came out with. Or any really gun metal or darker silver color is just fine. Black Templar, I'm going to use this a fair bit in this video, I think. But I went right over the Skeleton Horde horns. I think, you know, I, I was sticking to contrast paints, but I easily could have used more like a Vallejo black ink or, or even just honestly black paint for more instantly opaque coverage, which is what I really wanted with these horns. So I did use uh, Black Templar. It's not covering completely, as you can see, so I'm gonna end up coming back with some more later. I also started to get it on his head, which is not where I wanted it. And then I tried to correct that, which was making it worse. So I'm literally just licking my my brush and trying to rub it off and using my finger. Eventually I get I get most of it under control and I can come back with some red later and paint over it, which you'll see. I have this funky mix of 2 to 1 Agrax Earthshade Gloss to Reichland Fleshshade Gloss, and that's what I use to wash my golds. And because on like this, this necklace here, the detail is really shallow, so the shade is not going to work great just to, by running your brush along it. So I sort of, you can maybe you could tell, I was kind of dabbing it on the necklace to kind of make the shade kind of blob onto it. So now I'm going to use chain mail, which is kind of like a rune fang steel or a mid, sort of a mid-tone silver. I'm just highlighting the parts of the shield uh, trim that are facing upwards towards, let's say, like an overhead light. So now the the uh, transparent sword, I'm going to use Yand and Yellow contrast paint. The truth is, like this contrast paint works quite well with the transparent portions of these Nolzers figures, I would say. Um, there was a little bit of black paint or dark blue as you can see there on the sword that I had to try to scratch off because any little imperfection is going to show. Um, but overall it covers nicely. It leaves the thing, whatever it is, in this case the sword, it leaves it transparent so light can still come through it uh, but does a nice job of tinting it. Now black to <laughs> back to black Templar. I'm covering the um, what we previously covered with the flesh tear is red on that little piece of ribbon or cloth and i also do that on the one that's wrapped around his wrist and again to create that very very dark almost black red color more black templar this time i want the eyes to be similar to the artwork i'm going to go for this look of darkness in the eyes with just like a white light shining out or like a white glint and so to do that i'm going to darken his um the hollows of his eyes or his eye sockets without being like pure opaque black. So I just carefully painted that in. More black Templar. This time I'm painting this into the deepest recesses of the folds of his skirt. Uh, just to really darken that up and create a little more contrast per se uh, between the folds. So now I'm going to put those dots of white I mentioned. I'm zoomed in here and you can see I'm just bracing my fingers and very slowly putting a dot of white. You can use any white you have. I'm just using P3 Marl White. I like it. It's a nice bright white and just super slow. What I'm doing here, and you can see they're not quite right, so I'm going to be trying to like wipe it off and that's not going to work, but so it's going to take some some trial and error here to get the white and the black to look right. Uh, one thing I do though is I wear the strongest set of drugstore reading glasses I have because it really, really helps to see up close to these tiny little eye bits. Uh, so if you have trouble with that, and here I super goofed it up, see what I mean? It, it's quite tricky to paint these. Any eyes are kind of tricky. And so I'm trying to wipe it off. I'm trying to, trying to get to it. But ultimately I decided what I'll do is I'll come back with a bit more of the Black Templar to cover that up. Here's Retributor Armor just to paint the little tiny ring he's got on one of his horns. Pretty straightforward. Oh look, Black Templar. Now once again, bracing my hands, using a fine, fine point and going very slowly, I screw it up again. I'm really trying to fix these eyes. So I just wick that up and, you know, kind of start over. 
ultimately just by trying, failing, fixing, trying, I did manage to get his eyes to a place I was pretty happy with. Now I use Griffound Orange to paint the flames. There's hardly any on the sword. You can see how I applied it there. And also to apply it to a little bit of this shading effect on some of the curved segments of the sword. I kind of screwed up the bottom one there because I didn't go all the way into the um, sculpt section, but I will fix that after. Yeah, just applying it, kind of looking at the picture and just trying to create a little more visual interest rather than just have this big lump of yellow. I'm not sure if it really works, you know, it's because it's a transparent piece, it's difficult to gauge. But in the end, I was okay with the final effect that uh, you'll see eventually. We're going to come back to that and keep working on making it look a little better. So I come in with some Evil Sun Scarlet. This is the airbrushed version. You can apply it without thinning it quite as much, but you could obviously use the normal one as well. Uh, just really just doing a little bit of tidying up, getting any of the excess pooling here and there just to smooth things out on the red flesh. It actually blends really, really nicely and it almost looks like the same color. So this worked out pretty well. Now I take Wild Rider Red, and this is less of a fixer and more of just enhancing some of the highlights that are in place following on the contrast paint use. Uh, I'm used to using this on you know tips of ears, cheekbones, tip of his nose, things like that. Just trying to pull out the face area detail a little bit with this highlight. All right, so I generally do not like to hand brush varnish. I find you can very very easily end up with brush strokes that dry in the varnish and kind of show so but I I couldn't really airbrush this as I didn't want to get a uh, matte varnish effect on that metallic metal armor we'd done the metallic red I also didn't want to get it on the sword and didn't feel like re re remasking it and so I'm trying to just apply it on things like the flesh I wanted it to kind of help smooth out the flesh and make you know make the finish a little more matte I'm also going to go in and do that on the skirt because that's obviously quite, it's looking a little shiny. Um, but again, I I find I just don't like using uh, hand brushed varnish. I'm using Vallejo. I think it's fine as a brand and everything. But what happens is like on the dark skirt, I found I was getting little fleckies and, and little bits of, of the varnish that maybe clumped or something. So it kind of did some weird things to the finish I wasn't thrilled about. In the end, it's fine, uh, but and you should use whatever you have, but just recognize that if you spray the varnish, you're definitely going to hit the armor and the sword and possibly get some unwanted results. In the past, you may have seen me use Ard Coat over top, or you know, any gloss varnish over top of a black claw, like with the 3D printed dragon I did, and it can look good in the right circumstances, but I did find that this time it was too glossy and it was kind of overpowering. So I'm just having all kinds of fun with varnish on this guy and I'm going to end up coming back to try and change that. Now some Black Templar. I'm just putting a little bit on the tips of the flames just to have them look a little less flat and orange. Then I tried Satin Varnish over the gloss varnish that had dried. So by now I'd say I've added a good millimeter of paint and varnish to these horns and any possibility of details obliterated. Uh, and again, like, well, so it goes on looking this whitish blue color, um, but it does dry clear, but it doesn't actually pull them down enough. So I am going to come back to them again after this dries. Now using some Blood Angel Red, I'm just going to add even more depth to the shading on these uh, little curvy bits of sculpt on the transparent sword. I kind of goof it up on the one that's below there on the second, on the second one where I start to kind of run up too high and, and make a mess of it. I think in the end it's going to turn out okay because I'm going to come back and use a couple of other colors to kind of try and smooth things out a bit. By the way, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned this or not, but I'm doing the same thing on the back side of the sword where there is also sculpted detail. Still noodling on the sword, a little bit of a end in yellow. I want to darken up that shading a little bit and try to blend that in with the oranges and reds we've been doing. Uh, it's kind of working kind of not so then I'm going to come in with orange again and try to create some mid-tones 
I think this is where I start to, I think I screwed this up on the bottom, bottom one sort of went too high and yeah, there, I kind of couldn't fix that. So in the end, I'm happy with the sword. It could, could have been better, could be, it's not amazing, but I think it's okay. And yeah, I did continue to noodle on it to try and get it to a place I was happy with. I rarely use Auric Armor Gold and had to really stir it up and shake it up to revitalize it. It's been in my drawer for quite some time. But I wanted to add a little bit of highlight, a little bit of gleam to the gold, so I decided that was probably a good color for it. Just applying it a bit to the hilt, a little bit to the earrings and, and the necklace. It doesn't show dramatically, I wouldn't say, but it probably helps a little bit. I painted some Nuln Oil right out of the bottle into some of the recessed areas. They're not very deep and so it's a little tricky to create the shading, but just trying to add a little bit more depth to the trim around the shield. And we'll end on Black Templar, uh, having used it several times with this guy. I'm painting it over the dried varnish on the horns as I continue to get the horns to a place I'm happy with. Uh, I had a feeling that the contrast paint would um, create a bit of a more matte finish, so we let that dry. And it did, it did do so, so I am actually happy with those horns after all. I think this guy looks pretty cool for a Nolzer's miniature. They're not super easy to work with. Uh, some of the details a little shallow, the, the mold lines and things like that. But this was a really bad, I said so in the beginning, I think, but this is a really badass figure. I just had to paint this one. And I'm really quite happy with how he turned out, especially using so many contrast paints. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.